So I hear you have a cooking show and uh, are interested in cooking books. I do, I am. What's this? And so this is an 1891 publication from Dayton, Ohio called Gilt Edged Recipes. And it's part of our Franklin collection of uh, cookbooks at the Rare Books and Manuscripts Library. I don't have an exact item count for you, but it's somewhere north of 8,000 volumes of historic cooking materials. Wow, that's um, a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a bit and it's growing. Um, this uh, particular book is, I think, really representative of the kinds of things that you will find in our collection. So, like I said, it was published in 1891 in Dayton, so it's got a very distinct Ohio connection mm -hmm. here. Um, but one of the things that's really exciting about cookbooks is how often they um, demonstrate direct interaction by the person cooking with this book. So it'll be through additions, corrections. Sometimes you'll even see food spray. Uh -huh. um, for a well-loved recipe exactly. is typically covered in something. And we see multiple examples of how um, not just the original owner in the 1890s interacted with this book, but how successive generations of people interacted with this book. So you can note at the front here we have uh, what's called an errata slip or a list of errors and then the corrections. Mm -hmm. Uh, that the publisher noticed but didn't notice until after the book had been printed. Late. So let's throw this in yeah. and let's readers know. Well, in this case, we have a short list of errors, um, but occasionally we'll turn to recipe 223, which says it needs uh, a correction. Very occasionally, the owner in the 1890s or very early 1900s um, went through and added in the actual correction that, that is so suggested on the when they came to this slip. recipe, they'd remember that there exactly. had been a change. That's exactly. a really good idea. Yeah, and then you will also find examples in this book of the user actually adding their own modifications um, or slight additions to yeah. different recipes to kind of personalize I them. do that to cookbooks all the time. Yeah. So you can kind of see the development of uh, attitudes towards cooking, mm -hmm. what local practices and regional practices were, etc. Um, but also, this cookbook, like a lot of others, at the back of the volume, the publishers deliberately bound in blank pages oh, that's so that the owner could add their own notes, their own recipes, add family recipes. Which they did. Um, yeah, or you insert clippings from other books or, or mm -hmm. papers, etc. So the, the section of uh, formerly blank leaves, some of them are still blank, but we have at least three different um, owners over time from the 1890s up into the mid-1960s who have added their own notes to this. Uh, and there's some local flair and flavor. So this one I really like. Uh, the woman who wrote this um, wrote quite a few recipes into this book in the 1960s. But this particular one is for uh, oven-baked donuts. Mm. And she very helpfully marks for those folks who work in cookbooks and the history of cooking and cookbooks, she very helpfully marks that it's my version. <laughs> um, and then she also talks about where she sourced the, the recipe that she's writing down here and that she's adapting. She sourced it um, out of the Columbus Dispatch newspaper, uh, the February 20th, 1964 um, issue of that wow. paper. And so we get to see this kind of interaction um, where we see what people are really interested in cooking, what they're interested in preserving. And here we have an opening where we can actually see two different owners at different points. This is much, much earlier handwriting. Mm -hmm. So this would be early 20th century probably um, and 1960s where we've got wow. compiled recipes over time. Yeah, it's um, like layers of history living exactly. together through exactly. food, which I think is a great yep. way to learn about people. Yeah. That's incredible. Thank you for showing mm -hmm. me this. I love yep. it. Watch full episodes of Broad and High Thursday nights at 8 on WOSU-TV.